some studies actually when you take the same behavior from an African American child and, and a white child, the teachers rate the African American child as um, behavior as much more intentional, much more aggressive and violent, um, and uh, then want to punish it with a much harsher discipline. So to me, that's actually what's playing out uh, across the country, and it's more about implicit attitudes that you've internalized some ideas about African Americans being more aggressive and violent. And I think that plays out in schools in, in, in terms of discipline, in terms of how teachers interpret behavior. Um, and we need to help schools and teachers understand these behaviors differently. I think from experience, we know there's a, a, a pretty strong relationship. I think from research, we're still trying to establish that relationship and, and um, to show that how kids are being treated in school is leading to them dropping out. So it's not them having a disinterest in education, which sometimes gets kind of purported, or them just not having ability. Um, those are usually the two kind of big pieces we put it on. These students just aren't smart enough, or they have no, they don't value education. Um, that, to be honest, from everything we know about education in, in research, isn't the case. So we know that discipline, referral, suspensions, and expulsions are happening more often. And those, those lead to students dropping out. We don't have a sense for our, how these relationships are building to actually produce referrals, um, uh, suspensions, and expulsions. And so that's where the microaggressions in the classroom, I think, um, is uh, is important in making this sort of link that what's happening is getting constructed in the classroom. It's not just about the student's behavior. It's about how the teacher interprets the behavior and how this then leads to a student receiving a referral or a suspension. Um, and to me, that's, that's um, if a teacher actually um, enacts in a microaggression on a student, um, the student's response is going to be uh, pretty negative often. Um, then if we start to um, discipline that response rather than understanding the teacher's uh, initial sort of microaggression, then it seems like it's all the student's responsibility for acting in a particular way. Some students internalize uh, some of the microaggressions from teachers. Um, others um, try to act back towards them. And I think it's that uh, when they're trying to re um, resist the microaggression that you see teachers begin to sort of refer kids to just want them uh, to be suspended, to send them out of the classroom. When you send a student out of the classroom, that should actually be a pretty huge um, uh, act because you're moving them from instruction. So when they come back tomorrow, they're going to be a lesson behind. So when we do that kind of, uh, when we make that kind of an act as a teacher, it should be seen as a huge sort of sign um, that they can't, they can't participate in this classroom um, because then they're going to be a class behind when they're a class behind, um, they're more likely to not understand what's going on in the classroom, which means they're going to have to ask more questions. The teacher might see that as um, acting out of turn, um, and then you get this sort of cycle. Um, that cycle is the piece that we, we haven't established very well in research yet, um, and, uh, it, but I think is a big sort of missing, missing link in establishing how these relationships are getting constructed to lead to these other discipline. Um, um, issues and dropping out. Um, and so I think if we took it, if we took sort of removing a student from a class or suspending a student more seriously from an educational standpoint, we would want to educate them if they're going to stay in school. And I don't see a whole lot of that happening.